we're going to take a look at re-expressing data on the TI. So I'm looking at um, this list right now of baseball salaries and we've got year and salaries as our two variables. So let's uh, choose year as the explanatory variable, salary as the response. We see that these salaries are increasing over time. So let's look at the shape of the scatter plot. So we need to start with stat edit and um, I'm going to clear my first two lists here and enter the data. Okay, so to look at the scatter plot then, I'm going to go to stat plot. Oops. And plot 1 is already on. It's looking at L1 and L2 and it's already set to scatter plot, so we should be good to zoom 9. There's the scatter plot. Now, it looks almost linear. We can see that there's a little bit of a curve right here. Now, um, to really tell if there's a curve there or not, we should look at a plot of the residuals. So here's how you do that. First thing we need to do is we need to actually calculate a linear regression on this. So I'm going to do this one right here. It's looking at L1 and L2, so I'm good to go. And on your calculator, you'll probably see something like linear regression. And then if you don't put L1, L2 in there, those are the defaults. If you want to do a linear regression on any other two lists, you need to state them here explicitly. Okay, now that we've done that li linear regression, though, we have access to the residuals. So I'm going to go back to Stat, Edit, and in L3, I'm going to put my residuals. So I need to hit Enter so that I can define L3 as something. And what I will define it as is in your list of list names here, we've got one of them called residuals. You might have to scroll down further than 7, depending on how your calculator is set up. But now what we want to do is we want to take a look at... Um, L1 and L3 on a scatter plot. So I could go back and change my first scatter plot, or I can put it in a different scatter plot and switch back and forth. I'll show you what I mean. So I want this list right here to be L3, not L1. There it is. And plot 2 is off, you see, right now. So I need to go back up here, turn it on, and I'm going to go to plot 1 and turn it off so that I'm only looking at the residual plot. Okay, after all that, we're ready to zoom 9, and there are the residuals, and we see that there's a very definite curve in the residual plot. So this means that um, these data are not well represented by a linear model. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look through the ladder of powers or the ladder of exponents and see if anything there will straighten this out for me. Okay, now in L3, that's where I'm going to put um, some of my exponent stuff. So let's take a look at um, let's take a look at x squared and see what that does for us. So um, or y squared rather. I'm going to take these values in L2. and I'll square them. Okay, now if I go to stat plot, I want to plot L1 versus L3 and I should have that um, already set up where I was doing the residuals a moment ago. L1 versus L3 as a scatter plot is on, everything else is off, so I'm ready to zoom 9. And okay, squaring it did not help, that made it worse, right? So let's go back and try something else. Why don't I do L2 to the point 0.5? Okay? This is the same as taking the square root of L2. Now, if I zoom 9, did it get straighter? That looks pretty straight. So maybe we should take a look at a plot of the residuals. Now, in order to get the residuals, I need to do another linear regression calculation. So I'm going to do stat, I'm going to do um, calc, linear regression, 
but I want to do L1 versus L3 because that's where I have um, the square root of the y values there. In, they're stored in L3 at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to do a linear regression on that. Um, on your calculator, it's going to look like linear regression L1 comma L3. Okay, we get an R value of 0.968. I think that's a little bit higher than it was before. But let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the residuals. Here's a different way to look at the residual plot. So I'm going to go to stat plot. I'm going to turn this plot off. Okay. Now I just did a linear regression, so that means that I have access to the, the new residuals. In plot 3 here, I'm going to plot L1, my x values, against the residuals themselves. So I'm not storing them in a list, they're already stored in the calculator. So L1 versus the residuals, this is yet another way to look at the residual plot. I need to turn this plot on if I'm going to look at it. And then I zoom 9. Okay. This residual plot is still looking um, a little bit curved, okay? So maybe the square root doesn't help so much. Let's see if there's something better we can do. So I'm going to come back to stat, edit, and now I'm going to take a look at, um, we just did to the one half power. Let's make it log of L2. That's, that's where we're going next. Okay, now let's take a look at the plot to see what it looks like. So I've got L1 versus L3 in here, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Um, I'm going to turn plot 3 off now. And uh, let's zoom 9. Okay, now that looks really straight. Okay, and the way that we can be sure is once again we're going to look at the residuals. So I've got that um, actually stored in here, but if I go straight to plot 3 again, let me show you what happens. It says L1 versus the residuals, so I'll go ahead and turn it on. And uh, I should turn plot 2 off so that we're not looking at them on top of each other. And zoom 9. And there's that darn curve again. But we're still going to see the exact same residuals we saw last time because we didn't redo the linear regression. So I'm going to come back, do a linear regression for L1 and L3. Okay, it's done. Now if I go back to stat plot, um, plot 3 is on, it's L1 versus the residuals. Uh, it just did a, a new linear regression, so we have new residuals. And hopefully this is going to be um, what we want. Zoom 9, and there it is. We see here that there's no um, definite curve. We've got a relatively even amount of scatter across this, so that means that um, that means that x versus the log of y is going to re-express this data um, in such a way that it becomes suitable to apply a linear model.